What's up, everybody? Astro Catacle here from the Astro Catastrophe, and we've had a pretty zany news week so far. Whether it's you know the sort of weird things that's been going on on Balenciaga, or it's the nuclear engineer being caught stealing a purse from an airport in Minneapolis. We've had a number of things that have happened both in the mainstream and sort of off the mainstream with like that no jumper interview where the guy got attacked. Um, we've had some pretty weird, hairy situations lately, and I think it's only going to get worse. We'll start off by talking about the interview between Kanye West and Tim Pool, and I understand completely why it went that way. And it's because of two reasons. It's because Tim Pool was bringing on a very controversial guest to his show. And I think being that he's huge on YouTube, this is someone who he doesn't want to get his channel flagged for, for saying perhaps anti-Semitic things. And you also got Nick Fuentes with him, who is someone who is also very associated with anti-Semitism. I'm not saying that they are anti-Semites, but the moniker has certainly attached itself to him, especially with a big name like Kanye West he is almost public enemy number one in the, the eyes of the media either way that's sort of Tim Pool's reasoning I think for why he kind of challenged Kanye West because Kanye West said something among the lines of let's see what did he say here you're not going to take my pain away right <clears throat> the Jewish people say it's the Holocaust this happened and you can't say anything about it we can't take their pain away no one's going to denounce the fact that they tried to lock me up because every time I'm just holding stride and it's like I thought this was more Malcolm X but I find out I'm more MLK because I'm getting hosed down every day by the press and financially. I'm just standing there. And when I found out that they tried to put me in jail, it was like a dog was biting my arm. I almost shed a tear, but I still walked and stride through it. So Tim Pool began asking him, you know, in a way challenging him, like, who's they, you know? And ye... How, whoever, whatever you want to call him, I, I admire him for sticking to his guns. I absolutely do. But I don't think that this was necessarily the platform for him to be able to express himself. I just don't think he had that opportunity. And that is pretty much more or less the reason why he walked out because he was not going to be able to say what he wanted to say. Um, <clears throat> And I don't necessarily think Tim Pool was going to let him say what he wanted to say. Again, like, you know, he's got to look out for himself in the long run. Um, but uh, yes, it's very much that Kanye West feels that there is someone in the press, the media, the establishment, uh, the record industry, whoever he has worked with. He strongly feels that these are the same types of people that are telling people what to think, that are telling people what to believe, and that are kind of putting the lower rungs of society, people like me and you, beneath them, and telling them who to vote for, telling them who to, what to think, um, <clears throat> telling them what's wrong, telling them what's right. And these are the same people who he believes have wronged him or have tried to screw him over. And, you know, it, it's very possible that they did. I'm not denying that they did and i'm not saying that they didn't you know it, it, whatever happened to kanye west has really pushed him into that direction whether it's just the way he believes things or it's just he really sees the media and uh, the record industry and all the people all the figureheads working within it he sees them really screwing people over himself included and he wants to put his message out there and i completely admire him for that however these are also you gotta keep in mind these are also the same people that made him famous and gave him millions of dollars <clears throat> i mean <clears throat> i think what it is with kanye west is very faustian you know you can have it all now and then pay for it later and by god he is paying for it right now so <clears throat> I respect him. I'm not a fan of him, but I absolutely respect him. And I understand why he walked out on Tim Pool like that, because he wasn't be going to be able to say what he wanted to say. Um, and there's some other things going on with him that I am just really confused about, <clears throat> such as Milo Yelnopoulos being his campaign manager. Um, I guess this there is some money going into this, and it's probably, you know, they're not entirely joking around with Kanye's run for president um I just if he's going to be serious about it I think that Milo is someone who is very divisive 
I think Milo is someone who cannot be trusted. And it's already been displayed over Twitter, these leaked uh, messages from Milo accusing Kanye of being gay, uh, expressing a desire to kill Kanye. And I think he was revealing some tax information about him too. And it's just like, this is someone who you want to be your campaign manager. Someone who I think burns bridges with most people he has worked with. Um, <clears throat> I think this, this is someone who purely follows the fame and money. And someone who is kind of, I don't, I, I don't know, I think he's, he, Milo has spent the better half of his life expressing himself for who he is and living his lifestyle accordingly how to how he wanted to live it. But now it seems like he's turned around and he's trying to repress it. And it's it's almost like it, like he's doing it to satisfy you know edgy GOP people, and this is just like what I don't get about this guy. And like then he goes out there and says he wants to deconstruct the Republican Party, and there's just so many things about Milo that I am just very skeptical towards, very wary towards. I think he is a show horse for the GOP personally, you know, for edgy GOP people, he's, he's sort of a novelty, you know, he's the, the quasi, uh, former gay conservative, whatever he is now, I, I honestly don't know. He, he's someone who I think is, makes a lot of people very wary of him because he's just simply someone who's just not to be associated with i think in such a field like if you're gonna have him as your campaign manager you better look out you you know he 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 is dead set on destroying trump the man who in many ways made him who he is today you know he, he his whole grift was based off of trump and now he wants to destroy him Anyways, in other news, there is this uh, commentator known as Ali Alexandro, and I've seen him a couple times. I've seen him on Infowars. I don't know if he's, you know, an employee of Alex Jones. I don't know if he's under Alex Jones' payroll, but I've seen him on there multiple times. I don't know if he just, you know, does some contracts with him or what, um, but I've seen him before. His name is Ali Alexandro, and he had some interesting things to say about the interview himself, which was... Um, he was on another podcast and he said, I have some things to say tonight about Tim that would get him investigated by the police. If anyone treats ye like a N word, I'm going to destroy your fucking life. Uh, I don't know what he's referring to, but he did say this on a podcast. It wasn't related to Infowars. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't take it as a completely and entirely baseless claim. I think, you know, there is probably something there that he does have that he can pin on Tim Pool. Um, but at the same time, I think that this could just be him talking completely 110% off his ass. It's probably related to January 6th, and I don't know um, if you can really do anything that's going to be very effective on Tim Pool. I mean, if he was just there, he was just there. You know, as long as he wasn't coordinating people to to attack the fucking Capitol and to surge inside there, I don't think he really did anything wrong. If he was just there documenting things and did not enter the building, I honestly don't think he did anything wrong. Um, <clears throat> But uh, he did say that the other night on a podcast, and I thought I would bring it into light because I think it's it's a it's fairly fairly important to know that um, a lot of bridges are being burnt uh, currently right now, um, especially in this the sort of uh, edgy GOP Republican side of things. It seems like there's a lot of group infighting going on, being that. Uh, we had this uh, dinner with Fuentes, uh, Milo, and Kanye, and now Kanye and Trump, they they don't get along anymore, and uh, Milo is out there spreading these messages about uh, Kanye. Um, 
and I'm seeing a lot of this pop up. I, I mean, I, I think the, the Republican Party is going to have a lot of this in the future, a lot of group infighting. And this is sort of what the left does all the time is they sort of eat themselves from the inside. They eat each other. And I think that the GOP is going to start doing this or it already has. It's well on its way to doing it. Um, you like Huey Lewis on the news? I'm not a fan of Republicans. I'm not a fan of uh, what Kanye stands for. He wants a Christian theocracy. Oh my God, which I'm not even going to get into. We absolutely don't need that as a country. Uh, and Fuentes, who attended the Trump dinner party with him, virtually wants the same thing. He wants Christ to come before anything. Uh, these are both religious zealots that I highly disagree with in that regard. I believe religion is an independent thing and you should be able to practice it to its fullest extent as long as it's not bullying people and that's absolutely what Fuentes and Kanye want to do with their theocracy is they want to bully people into believing and practicing the same things that they believe and practice. Um, <clears throat> which is not going to happen, at least I hope not. Um, I think we all have the freedom of expression, but there are, you know, limitations to how far you can express those things without pissing people off and having people go to Congress and vote about these things and start mobs of petitions and everything else in the world to, you know, prevent these things from happening and turning into, you know, <clears throat> a non-secular state like uh, somewhere in the you know, like, like, uh, like Israel or something like that is absolutely not what we want. Anyways, <clears throat> lastly, we had <coughs> Sam Britton, I think his name is, and he is that uh, sort of crazy robot, non-binary nuclear engineer who's in charge of cleaning up nuclear waste or something. He was uh, put on the, uh, the Biden administration basically because he's like this, uh, transgender matt damon or something i don't know but uh he was caught uh stealing a very uh, vera bradley which is a very expensive suitcase that is worth over two thousand dollars you know fancy posh people who who uh <clears throat> work uh six-figure jobs buy this sort of thing because they want to show it off to their friends and he stole it from saint paul airport in minneapolis on september 16th the camera showed Britain taking the suitcase and removing its tag as he walked off with it. Or she, I don't fucking know. Um, he was later called by the police, um, I think sometime in October, and he denied any wrongdoing as far as I know. And called them back two hours later and claimed that he had or she had not been completely honest with them and said that it was this mishap. It was a mistake of some sort that they accidentally accidentally grabbed it, which can't be verified at this point. I think it's very obvious that he stole it. Um, and he's facing up to five years in prison and a $10,000 fine, which I think is kind of funny. This is the person who is in charge of, uh, cleaning up nuclear material and he's about to uh, be thrown into prison for stealing a $2,000 purse. I mean, I think that says a lot about someone who is going to be in charge of that sort of thing within our own country i think that says a lot um and i mean he does sort of look like he fell into a a vat of nuclear waste i it just you know he certainly does he's the toxic avenger or something it's just it's just ridiculous this guy is ludicrous i think he has unhinged written all over her him whatever i don't think they should be in charge of nuclear uh, removing nuclear waste uh I think they should be as far away from it as possible. This is pretty much the type of job that I would want someone who appears sane and competent doing. And this is someone who clearly, clearly is not competent if 
they get their suitcases mixed up like that and then call the police two hours later and you know tells them oh i was nervous that i accidentally grabbed this is someone who is clearly incompetent if they're telling the truth and you really want that person to be in charge of cleaning up nuclear waste no you don't and if they're lying then this is someone who could lie about plenty of things when it comes to cleaning up nuclear waste. They could say that they cleaned it up when it's, you know, scattered all across your back fucking yard. It's, it's buried under the ground. You don't know where it's coming through the sewage system. So this is someone who I think is just completely untrustworthy for that job. But that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. I'm not entirely um, going to shit on the guy. I mean, he does um, <clears throat> look you know he does look like a a, a a interesting sort of person to say the least i don't know what else to say about him no this person kind of just uh i i i i wish him well but don't, you know come on dude this is just ridiculous <clears throat> anyways i'm astrocatical this has been the astrocastrophe thank you for listening and watching and i will see you in the next one